Good morning. Good morning, Father. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is very good. Very good. Some of the members of Columbus who are with us today and members of the Grand Habitat family. Remember the mother and the sister. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Belated Happy Swedish Day to everyone, and we continue to live stream this mass. So, for those who are participating via the live stream, we welcome you. Even though you're distant, you're close to us. Mass is celebrated every day during the week at 9 a.m. in the church. The seniors meet on Mondays at 10:30 in Toko Hall. You are welcome to join them for prayer, drinks, refreshments, and occasional trips. The entrance is on the north end of the building. The parking lot is right there also. Monday, October 18th, tomorrow night, the ushers will meet at 7 p.m. in the parish hall. Ushers and greeters. This Wednesday is the last day to drop off your unwanted but good Christmas items. These items will be sold at the second annual Christmas resale sale on October 29th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Saturday, October 30th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So times are in the Highlander also. A chili cook-off sponsored by the Men's Club will be held this coming Saturday, October 23rd from 4 till 7 p.m. Invitation letters are mailed this past week inviting family members of those who have died from October 2020 to October 21st for a memorial service that will be held on November the 2nd. And at that time, the prophet will be presented to each family from their loved ones. The ladies of the parish are invited to attend a women's retreat at St. Paul of the Cross on November the 12th to the 14th, that's Friday through Sunday. The theme for the retreat is Bouncing Back, Living in Hope. There's information in the Highlands, so it's a great time to get away. There will be a second collection for World Mission Sunday next weekend. That's the uh, annual collection that's taken around the world to help the churches in need throughout the world. We recently had funerals for Lenore Archer, Ken Gervasi, Thomas Kletsky, and a funeral mass for Tom Mackey will be this Saturday, October 23rd at 10.30 a.m. with visitation at 10 a.m. Please keep all of them and their families in your prayers. And thank you for turning off your cell phones and let's remember those who have died in prayer now. Eternal rest grant upon them, O Lord. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful depart through the mercy of God. Thank you very much. Let's stand in faith now and be ready to receive the word of the Lord.
And that's why we come together, that the Lord will keep us on the path that leads us to life. And if we have strayed, the Lord's mercy and everlasting embrace brings us back. So we pray for that mercy and God's peace, which the world cannot give us. You came among us to call sinners to the banquet of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to show us the path to eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, help us to forgive those who have wronged us, and bring us all and always to everlasting life. Amen. We give glory to our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen, 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 Amen. Just needed to turn the air on so it's more comfortable for our gathering today. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God with us forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. He gives his life as an offering for sin. He shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servants shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord.
Lord, let your mercy be on us. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. As we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. As we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. As we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. As we place our trust in you. See. The eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our in you, as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O oh Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord.
came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Jesus replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to Jesus, we can. Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, you know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. We all make decisions in our life that at the time seemed right and good, and later turn out to be less than we imagined. 
but sometimes those decisions turn out to be better than we imagined. The relationship that we committed ourselves to and then the other person changes or we change and things do not go so well. Or on the other hand, the commitment that we made turns out to be the best thing that we had ever done as the relationship grows from first love to a growing and even more mature love that we thank God for every day. My parents told the story of how shortly after they were married, they were all set to put a down payment on a farm. Then the night before, it began to rain rather heavily, and they realized they would not be able to get a crop in soon enough for harvesting. So they waited, didn't buy that farm, and eventually bought the farm where they lived for many years, raising our family, belonging to St. Peter's Church in Mount Clemens, and making available a Catholic education for most of the family at St. Mary's School in Mount Clemens. That decision changed our whole life, the whole lives of our family, our future friends, our Catholic upbringing. That decision made in the course of their early years of marriage made a difference in their life and in ours as well. The disciples of Jesus made a decision to follow him, but they could not have known the outcome of that decision at the time they made it. Jesus, just before the gospel passage we heard today, Jesus takes the disciples aside and began to tell them what would happen to him. I'll read that section from Mark chapter 10. They were on the way, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. Taking the twelve aside again, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him, spit upon him, scourge him, and put him to death. But after three days he will rise. And what is the response of the disciples? We know that James and John approached Jesus with the questions we just heard. Unbelievable insensitivity. It is as if they think that if Jesus is going to die, they should make their inheritance as secure before he is gone. So Jesus responds to their request with a challenge. Can you drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism with which I am going to be baptized. What does it mean to drink the cup? Basically, it means to share the life of a person totally. When two people would share the same cup, the same chalice, we might say, they would be a, making a commitment to each other that what they drank would bind them forever. In the Old Testament, the phrase, the cup of God's wrath, is used to describe God's judgment on people who are not faithful. Jesus' reference to the cup is related to this. Jesus drinks the cup of God's wrath so that we will not have to. Jesus asks us to drink the cup of his blood so we are covered by his sacrifice and protected from God's wrath as the chosen people were during the Passover. In another time, before COVID, we shared the cup of Christ's blood and communion at Mass as a sign of our oneness with him and our willingness to follow him, even in the face of persecution. We pray for the day we can safely again share the cup at the Eucharist. In a way, it has always been dangerous to share the cup because it was and remains an act of commitment to follow Christ, even to persecution and death. But now, in the consecrated bread we share at Mass, we make the same commitment, saying amen when we share communion as a sign that we believe we are sharing the very life of Jesus Christ. And we are saying amen to the people who are the body and blood of Christ. We commit ourselves to following Jesus in the way that he lived his life. <coughs> Excuse me. Suffering for others as we suffer when we give our lives in service. It is not easy to be married, I am told. We have to die to ourselves to compromise in order to form a union of love with another. It is not easy to be a parent or a grandparent 
to suffer the pain of disciplining a child when they want to do their own thing their way. It is not easy to be a teacher, to instruct young people and even older people who think they already know enough and are often close to new ideas and new ways. It is not easy to be a good politician when the world in which you live and work is often based on dishonesty and lies and self-serving. It is not easy to be a sibling, especially in the growing up years when being first seems more important than getting along for the sake of the family. It is not easy to be a member of a church, especially when the flaws of the church and its leaders are so apparent to the public eye. But we try to see the overall good that happens when people commit themselves to following Christ. We have the words of the letters to the Hebrew today to encourage us. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So we confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. To find grace for timely help, that's a beautiful phrase because when the time is there, grace comes into our life and we are grateful that we have committed ourselves to Jesus. The gospel today concludes with the words of Jesus, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The many includes those who try to follow the way of Jesus. Heaven is not automatic. We have to follow the way of Jesus on earth if we hope to gain heaven. Ransom is a term we do not use too often now, although the reality is present in our lives. In olden times, when a person was captured or kidnapped, a certain exchange was negotiated for money or for the life of another person. Our first line responders so often ransom themselves for the sake of others. They risk dying so that others might live. We often live in slavery to sin. We cannot break out of it by ourselves. Through our weaknesses and our addictions, we need the help of God to give our lives in service to God. Jesus has given his life to ransom us into the arms of a loving God. We show our gratitude by helping others find in us the way to live and to love. And this prayer. Loving God, your son came among us to bring comfort and compassion to those in need. Yet he also challenged our past presumptions about how we would find our way to eternal life. We live in a world of rewards expected for doing good, and yet your son invites us to consider that service to others is itself a reward without greater expectation of more compensation. Teach us, O oh God, the way of your son, who became the servant of all, giving his life to free us to do the same. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Follow Jesus completely, we need to trust that God who shows us the way to do that. So we profess the faith that he made. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now for those who have asked us to remember them and for those we have yet to remember. Our response will be recited by the congregation. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and the religious, may the Lord bless them in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For leaders of nations, may they speak the guidance of the Lord to enable them to better serve their people with integrity and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For the church, may we be an outward sign of God's favor and console those in need of God's blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For those who have committed the sin of abortion, may Jesus, who sympathizes with our weaknesses, grant forgiveness and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For all those who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and people of the world, may we experience the healing mercy of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For the sick who are in need of our prayers, Elaine Bledecki, Alice Bray, Jean Kamatra, Michael Clark, Don Foley, Paul Frost, Al Gruber, Ray Jedrowski, Roland Stevenson, Kayla Blake, David Balasevic, Phil Toko. May they be healed in body and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For all of those who have recently gone before us in death, Father Jack Child, Lenore Archer, Ken Gerbasi, Tom Mackey, Henry Pazdan, Mavis Frazier, Thomas Pletsky. May they enter into eternal life with Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For further intentions requested at this Mass, Adeline Sarnecki, Edmund Sarnecki, Dan Lewandowski, Scott Meckelhargi, Nancy Van Habermat, Elsie Williams. For the priests and deacons who will participate in the convocation this week, for victims of violence and terrorism, public safety emergency responders, the men and women in the armed forces and veterans, and the people of St. Margaret of Scotland. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For unspoken needs and intentions, we take a few moments of quiet prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. God the Father, hear our prayer. Hear us, God the Son. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Mercy on your people, Lord.
Grant us, O Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your many gifts and blessings, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries that we serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always shows compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you, God, are our Father, and that you care for us all as your sons and your daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name, singing the hymn of your glory, as together with all the others we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, Here we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ, 
has died and is rising, a gift that has been handed on to us. And we ask that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O oh Lord, to a perfect faith and charity as we join once more in prayer with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all those who love, who lead, who serve, who shepherd, and teach the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Help us to serve one another truly, act as the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church gather here and spread throughout the world, stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember once more our brothers and sisters who have died, those who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. And all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the life of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And Lord, grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is complete, that we may each and all come to an eternal dwelling place, rejoicing and living with you forever. Even now we give thanks for our communion with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, and with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, all of our patron saints, St. Margaret, St. Gregory, Blessed Father Solano Casey, Blessed Father Michael McGivney, with all the saints, we praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours.
eyes and hands of Christ. Where two or three are gathered in my name, love will be found, life will abound. By name we are called, from water we are sent, to become the eyes and hands of Christ. To and hands of Christ.
Sedas me amen, Señor, me inclino lavales los pies, hagan lo mismo humilde serviendo se unos a Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in these heavenly things at this table, we may be helped by what you give us in the present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Immediately following this Mass, we'll have what's known as the exemplification or the initiation of new members for the Knights of Columbus. You are all welcome to stay if you'd like to participate in that. But if not, you can safely return to your homes or whatever is next on your agenda. We thank the Knights for their service, for their commitment, and for the new members who will bring new life to our Knights of Columbus 379 together and 05. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with us forever. Amen. Go and live and celebrate our life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, My Jesus, I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire, and I desire to receive you in my soul. To receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment. Since I cannot at this moment. Receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me. Never permit me. To 
be separated from him. <laughs> be separated from him. Amen. 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 Let us go now united in the communion that we have shared with Christ. Thanks. Thanks.